All right, so first things first, although I got everything moved, this area is a complete mess. So I'm gonna turn this into an actual workable space. Well, I can't do any more on the fiberglass side of things because I'm out of cloth. Um, and I ordered some more, but in the meantime, I figured I would get the landing gear assembled. This was painted by the previous owner. And so this piece, which is GM 18, um, no longer fits all the way in there. Uh, so I need to kind of sand the inside of that down. And I started with a Scotch-Brite manually, but I think I'm gonna try something a little bit unconventional and see if it works. Hey, sweet. We are good on both sides. Let's get this wheel on. These are two, this um, kind of hole that's cut in here isn't cut deep enough, this big hole. And this shaft goes clear out to either side of here, but these, you can see, severely limit that. They go in another, oh, I don't know, quarter inch or so. Uh, so I'm not quite sure on that. There's no drawings. There's nothing in the entire installation manual on how to put this nose gear together. They just give an exploded view and then say, here you go, figure it out. So this is me figuring it out, I guess. Yeah, see there's a, there's a massive gap right in there. And that's with both of these all the way down. Well, after much deliberation, I have decided to put this together anyway and make it future Dylan's problem. All right, so I got uh, this bolt in. easy, which is GM22 with the GM23 spacer. And the diagram is a little confusing because it shows this going through this. But I think what actually happens is this is like the perfect ID to match the OD of this spacer. So I think this kind of just sets in there and then that retains it because it's a, it's a very slight friction fit. And then when this gets sandwiched in there, then gravity just kind of holds it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, that seems a little weird to me. I wonder, so there's two of these. I wonder if these get fixed together and then go like that so that this one has a little more spring. All right, so looking at the plans, it calls for GM16, which I'm pretty sure is this part. And then it points to GM17, which looks kind of like a washer or a spacer or something. But that, that got me thinking like, it could be this brass bushing. It would make sense because it fits perfectly in here. And it fits, like it has a pretty tight, like I would need to press this in, but this would be totally doable. Um, yeah, that's really tight actually. Hurt, but um, I just don't know. Now this nose gear is just gonna be temporary. This early design with the little like donut things is horrible. Um, and then later on there was an option to upgrade to the Outback gear, which is an actual proper oleo strut that was used on the 320s and up. Um, and I'm gonna do that, but it's impossible to find those unless you can find a wrecked plane. And as soon as you do, you call them up and the Outback gear is gone. Um, I've, I've tried to find them. So I'm still gonna roll forward with this gear and just try and make it work. I know it's gonna be really stiff and kind of obnoxious. All right, well, I got the inside of this cleaned out with this trick and then I got the outside of the bushing cleaned up um, with my ghetto lathe. And it actually just pressed right in there uh, with my fingers. So this, these parts were definitely made for each other. We're gonna go ahead and uh, put this trash together, I guess. I didn't think I'd spent five hours on just this nose gear, but here we are. Yeah, that feels like the right amount. It's, it's like not too stiff, not too loose. Perfect. That actually worked out. All right, so I was just digging around in the pile of parts that I found with all this weird gear stuff. And I found this bag whose contents shortly thereafter I ripped open and spewed all over my workbench. But I found this bolt, which is the right size to go through this. Uh, cool, so now I can put this in properly with the washer, of course. Um, 
yeah, so we're making progress. I think we're getting there. I still think I need to trim down the like axle that's in there so that it fits with these parts. Cause I looked online and I found a 320 manual that has these exact parts. This one tells you to just make a spacer and it's like way different. So I think this is like an early gear that came off of a 320. Um, and then we're mixing in some 235 parts to kind of get this to work. Like this is a really early 320 gear. I have no clue, this is just speculation, but regardless, I'm pretty sure this is like a weird retrofit or the factory was doing something weird. Maybe it's in one of the service bulletins I didn't read or skipped over or whatever, um, but I'm gonna roll with this bolt and maybe this hardware is important. We'll find out soon. Huh, cool. All right, so I also found this bolt, um, which I think, this looks quarter 20 or and whatever, whatever. Um, I think this will go in here. Hey, hey, so if my suspicions are right, that this is meant to kind of sandwich like this, this retains these two. Maybe that's how this is supposed to work. Uh, with that said, I still have this, which I don't know, the extent of my engineering abilities is playing with Lego as a kid. Um, but usually when you have spare parts, it's not good. So. Maybe this is a washer for the other gear or something. Maybe it's discarded as part of this little retrofit, whatever this retrofit is, I have no clue. Um, but we're just gonna keep pressing because I think this might work. This is weird, like this is a really janky nose gear. That, like, this kind of looks right, I'm not gonna lie. This will look something like that. So that uh, looks about right. Uh, let's get the rest of this together. Well, that's, uh, that's a nose gear. I've still got to join this to the part that's on the plane, uh, but that's gonna happen later and the manual kind of wants you to do it that way. So um, for now, I'm gonna say this is good. All right, so I got most of the nose assembly together. I got these bushings in and everything aligned up. Basically what I did is I kind of tacked this well in with a little bit of epoxy and Gorilla Glue just to get it and hold it into position. Um, and then I laid this out. One thing I did have to do that you can probably kind of see in there, um, one of the nuts that was on that really long bolt that goes through this retainer right here was just sticking out too far. And so I found these shallower nuts that were in that other little mystery bag. Um, and then those are actually the same distance out from the side of here as just the head and this bushing of a normal uh, nut since that one has to go all the way through. So what I do need to do still is trim that down because it is making contact with the side. But I centered this up so that the, the normal distance between these two sides should be pretty well equal. I got this mounted on the firewall. I still need to put my fiber frax blanket and uh, I'm actually using aluminum instead of stainless steel for the, the firewall that comes out here, but that blanket will go in, then the steel. Um, so I need to take this mount off, but I wanted to just get this aligned. So for now, this is all pretty much done. It comes out of here um, and it stands up and then I just need to make the retainer and then I also trim down this axle so that the wheel like actually fits in there and is tight. But uh, yeah, the nose gear is just about done. And once I get the firewall on, that'll be all I can do until my epoxy comes in. But after the nose assembly is all complete, <clears throat> uh, this is the next project. So the, the mains will be able to go on. We basically have to put that rear spar in and then put the, uh, the mains in and put the BL50 ribs in, which I can't make until more epoxy comes in. But once that's done, which is basically gonna be three major gluing operations, the epoxy for the BL50 ribs, and then gluing all of that to the airframe, and then gluing the giant belly pan on. Once all that's done, um, we can actually flip this thing over and it'll be on its landing gear for the first time, which will be pretty exciting. And then shortly after that, I will be mounting the engine. All right, so hopefully that wasn't too boring of a video. I really struggled with that nose gear because I just received kind of a hodgepodge of parts that didn't really match what was in the plan, so I was stuck to just figure it out. But I'm really excited to get everything on the nose gear done because pretty much all I have left is the firewall up there and then actually properly gluing that nose gear tunnel in. But after that, again, it's onto this stuff and that's gonna be pretty exciting to see this thing up on its gear and then see the engine mounted on it. So uh, make sure to stick around and uh, I'll see you in the next one.